So I bought the PlayStation Portal and then returned it less than 24 hours later. I wasn't even sure if I was gonna make a video over this as I kind of already covered my, my gripe with remote play during my Backbone One controller video. Link to that up here. Most of my opinions from that video about remote play still stands. Since then, I did try to rework the setup of my home Wi-Fi and moving around the pods to increase the signal strength here in my studio. Now, I think I'm finally in a good spot. I was even able to hardwire my PS5 to one of the pods. And with these changes, I can confidently say that I'm able to use remote play around my home. So why did I return the PlayStation Portal? Well, let's first take a closer look at the device. Immediately, one of the things that drew me to the portal was the screen. It's so much better in person. It really is a great size for portable gaming. The controllers are essentially identical with the standard DualSense controller that comes with the PS5, with only the difference being that the joysticks were a tad smaller on the portal. Something that I actually preferred since I have smaller hands, so it felt better overall. But aside from the looks and feel, this device is rather simple. A shiny new device solely for remote play. Now I've seen the videos on how People really like the PlayStation Portal and it's great. And apparently there is a market for something like this. Now, I'm not the type of person to buy new tech, film it, just to post it and then return it. I truly thought that the portal was for me. But less than 24 hours, I just didn't see an actual need for it. It gave me flashbacks to the Backbone One controller where it can really only do one thing unless you pay a subscription for it. This kind of felt the same thing. Now that remote play is possible here in my home, while well, I have my Steam Deck and my 11-inch iPad Pro, tech that I already have and carry around. So why add another device, let alone a device that can only do one thing? I guess if you have 200 bucks that you want to burn through, then sure. I do think the device is good overall. Again, that screen was really nice. But as I mentioned in, in my previous video about how I wanted to move things around going forward on my channel, I didn't want to buy tech just for the hell of it but rather be very intentional with what I buy. So I opted to save my 200 bucks and just use my iPad and Steam Deck for remote play. It just feels that the PlayStation Portal should have been something that was released maybe alongside the PS5, but given that we can download the remote play app and play that way, the Portal seems kind of pointless now. As it looks right now, there are folks that are really enjoying the Portal and I'm happy for them. I, on the other hand, am holding out for a true portable PlayStation gaming device to release that actually competes with the Steam Deck. I do hope that PlayStation hears our plea to make something that isn't chained or required to Wi-Fi. They were ahead of the game when they released the PSP and PS Vita, both which I had at the time. So I'm really hoping they're in the works for something great. Now I've seen the rumors of potentially something in the works, but time will tell. Comment down below what have been the best games for remote play. I personally have been playing Boulder's Gate 3 now that I finally finished Assassin's Creed Mirage but I think maybe it's time to get into Spider-Man. I've never played them before. Let me know below. I would love to hear from you and I will see you guys on the next one.